Hi, I'm Jen for Pet Safe Brand. Today we'll talk about how your dog learns. One of the most important factors in dog training is timing. Timing needs to be quick. It's best to reward desired behaviors as soon as possible, within one second, so your dog understands the association. Timing needs to be consistent to be successful. This is true of other aspects of training too. Training should be frequent and regular. Reward your dog often for desired behaviors and don't let long periods of time lapse between training sessions. Brief daily training sessions are best. Each dog is unique and different dogs may be motivated by different types of rewards. Many dogs are food motivated, meaning their behavior in the presence of food is driven by a desire to get that food. Other dogs may be more motivated by other rewards, such as attention from people, the opportunity to interact with other dogs, or access to toys. Do you know what motivates your dog? You can learn what motivates your dog by watching how he responds to different rewards. If he ignores one potential reward in the presence of another, you'll know that he values whatever he's focused on as a reward. The teach and treat works especially well for food motivated dogs because it uses food as a reward, but we will see that it can be used successfully to train dogs with other motivations too. Because food is ultimately a motivator for all animals, if a dog is hungry, he will work for his food. The most efficient way to use the teach and treat is to feed your dog all his meals during training. It's important here to note the difference between your dog's food and high value treats. High value treats are anything your dog prefers over his regular food. This can include things like people food, chicken jerky, and soft training treats. High value treats tend to be high in calories and low in nutritional value, limiting the healthy amount your dog can get in a day. So, if you use your dog's regular kibble with the teach and treat instead of high value treats, you'll be able to complete more training in a shorter amount of time. The teach and treat training philosophy is based on this strategy. Each training session is essentially getting your dog to work for his meals. If you're wondering whether making your dog work for food is a nice thing to do, remember that animals in the wild spend most of their time working to find food. Many of the jobs that true working dogs do, such as search and rescue, retrieving, and drug detection are all based on the dog's instinctive desire to hunt, work for food. The teach and treat taps into this instinctive desire to work for food by empowering your dog to learn which behaviors reward him with food. At its core, learning for dogs is all about cause and effect. Dogs learn to associate their own behavior, the cause, with the result, the effect. Reward-based training teaches your dog that certain behaviors result in a reward and certain other behaviors result in the absence of a reward. These behaviors can be anything from coming when called to staying put when someone enters the room. This is why it's important for your dog to be motivated to get the reward. If he doesn't value the reward, he won't feel motivated to perform the desired behaviors you're trying to train. This is also why timing and consistency are so important. If your dog's reward is delayed after a desired behavior, he may not learn to associate the reward with that specific behavior. Likewise, if you're inconsistent with when and why you reward your dog, he may have trouble learning to associate rewards with behaviors. The key to successful learning is to get your dog to make connections between behaviors and rewards so he understands that doing one thing will earn him a reward, while doing another thing will deny him a reward. You may be concerned that making your dog's meals part of his training could adversely affect his health. If your dog is a picky eater, you may need to start by training him to eat when food is available and on a set schedule. Once you offer a meal, leave it out only for a brief period and take away any food he doesn't eat until his next meal. Most dogs will quickly learn that they should eat when food is available or else they'll have to wait for the next meal. If you're concerned that your dog is losing or gaining weight, there are a few extra steps that you can take to ensure he is staying healthy. Make sure you only feed your dog the amount of food that is appropriate for his size. 
Most dog food packaging provides a chart indicating how much food a dog should get daily according to body weight. You can monitor your dog's body condition at home. If his ribs are visible, he may be underweight. If his ribs are not visible but you can feel them, he is likely close to an ideal weight. If his ribs are not visible and you cannot readily feel them, he may be becoming overweight. These are quick guidelines, but if you are concerned, always check with your veterinarian. That concludes this lesson. Next time we'll introduce your dog to the teach and treat and its basic functions.